Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today is day two of getting these sonotubes ready for concrete. This is what my early mornings consist of. Throwing the ball for Izzy. Oh, don't go down there, don't go, kitty. This cat has like special needs. He's had a, get, get, get. He's had a stroke and he does stupid things. And if he goes down there, we're gonna have a hard time getting him back out. I'm gonna have to get him in the house and I'll be right back. Okay, he won't let me catch him. Jeez, never an end to the drama. Hey, hey, out of there, cats. We have three cats here trying to get into these sauna tubes, and they're four feet down. I don't know how the hell I'd get them out of there if one of them jumps in. I guess I'm just going to have to hope it doesn't happen. Can you get over this? Ah. <sighs> Okay, I'm back at it. So I have a couple holes back here. I don't know if it's two or if it's three that I should be able to do the same way I did those. And on these, I'll show you the exact technique I use to do these. And then all of the rest are gonna be different. All right, I am in the back corner right here. And I was going to show you how to do one of these typical ones with this hole. But looking at it, the hole is on an angle in towards the building. This hole is straight up and down. So I'll do it on this hole. On this one, it looks like, well, it might work in the end. Because these tubes are only going down, I don't know, maybe like 8 inches. You could see on this one, yeah, that one's maybe eight, 10. Some of them go a little bit further down, but maybe I can make that work on this one, but it'll be a little bit atypical. I'll do the work on that one and then we'll get, oh. These cats are just going crazy. It's like the morning crazies and them, as well as the dog, just run right into these lines. Oh except for Maisie there. All right, let's grab a tube and we'll do that hole right there. These tubes, well, it's upside down, but it says nominal inside diameter plus minus half inch. I believe the center tube is probably the full 16 inches. This is minus a half, this is plus a half. So you can use that if you have like a hole that you have to put a whole tube in because it's really big and sloppy i would put the smallest one in that and if you have a hole that's just a little bit larger at the top it's probably better to put the big one in that on these holes i have this stuff left over i think those two are prop well actually that one on the right i can probably use on this one that's down to bedrock but I think I'll use these two for those two holes back there. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is go around and measure from the ground to the string. We got four and a half inches there. I'm gonna record all these and I'll use these dimensions a little bit later. When I was checking for the high spot of the building for my benchmark, I checked the corners and the centers all the way around and it turns out i thought this was my high spot but actually this is a little bit higher and that is a little bit higher it's no big deal this is four and a half inches from the line to the ground and i'm setting these tubes up four inches down from that line so this tube right here is only going to be a half inch above the ground level that might be hard to set, but I don't know. I'll get it. And then this one is six inches from the line to the ground. So this one's going to come up two inches. 
and then this one this is where we start to get to the special stuff i have this at 21 minus it's 21 from the line down to the bedrock down there i'm going to keep it a little bit above the bedrock and i'm going to try to get this in there throw some screws in and then backfill with gravel this one shouldn't be too hard these are going to be much harder all right let's get this typical one in and then we'll work on all these atypical ones right after that so once i have those measurements i just remove my line and by remove i mean just set it back again i learned the slip knot method from our our buildings and that really speeds up putting these lines on and off if i were to mess this up or if this gets stretched out i could quickly make a slip knot that's always been kind of a struggle in the past okay now to fit one of these we'll give this one a try first because we're only going a half inch above the ground this one might work yeah this is going to work just fine so now what i'm going to do is press this down as far as it's going to go and then we'll transfer a level line over from the ground you know i don't think i even need to cut this one if i put the line back i can just press this one until it's a half inch or until it's four inches down from the line and then i'll just level the top in both directions and this one will be good to go right away but normally especially if i have a full tube the tube would just go way up and i would put the level across make a mark right there and then in this case this was six inches below the line to the ground and i want it to be four inches i would go up two inches and then make little dashes all the way around i'll probably have one that i can show you that on a little bit later but this one is ready to go all right i put the string on so i can see what i'm doing a little better this is that angled hole so it's right at three and a half inches i'm seeing if i can i have a cat messing with my string on the other end uh, this tube needs an inch taken off of it like i said normally i would put the level across but this one is so jacked up the hole is so jacked up i'll show you that in a minute this one's so jacked up that i had to put the string on and just get a measurement right away all right let me see if this is level and then we'll pull that out and cut that inch off Actually, I'm seeing if I can get it level at that height, and I will be able to. All right, so this is going to need an inch taken off of it. Oh, I'm probably going to take an inch and a half. Yeah, I'll take an inch and a half off of this. That'll give me a little bit of wiggle room, and like I said before, I'm going to throw long screws through the tube and into the dirt and then backfill the gravel around it and that should steady it up really nice. All right. Want to remove an inch and a half and that'll go right to about 21. So we'll just call it 21 and then I'm going to mark 21 inches all the way around this and then cut that little bit off.
All right, this last hole is not cooperating. The tube will not go down as far as I thought it would. So what I'm gonna do is do it the way that I do all the other ones. All right, I got my mark on the tube. Now I gotta put the string back on and measure down from the string to the ground. I measured from the string to the bottom of the hole before. Measure down from the string to the ground, subtract four inches, and then go up from there, the four inches, and I'll cut this tube again, then it should be perfect. Okay, six inches. So I'm gonna measure up two inches Six minus four is two, and cut the tube again. Okay, I have all three of my tubes cut to size and fitted into the holes. Now I'm gonna go to each one and level the top and make sure it's exactly four inches down from that line. Then I'll backfill it and move on to the next one. Okay, so this tube wants to be way down there. This is actually the lowest spot. Real big angle. Big old root sticking out this side, so I'm having to deal with that. Okay, that's about four inches, and it does not have to be dead on. Okay, this back row is done. The wood side is done. That tube right there is ready to go. It just has to be leveled and backfilled and screwed into the dirt. And right here, we have a problem hole. If I put the tube right where this hole is, it's gonna be too far that way the bracket will come right to the edge. I'm gonna have to shave off, oh, well, actually, I'm gonna have to shave off right to here, just this semicircle right here, and then I'll have to put a full tube in here and backfill the whole thing. All right, here's what I found in this hole. I dug down and hit a gigantic boulder on the side of the hole. That's what he was hitting as well. And that's what pushed the auger over this way. So what I did was notched the tube on that side. I took the notch piece and just taped it to this side because the tube is a bit weakened. When I backfill this, I don't want it to crush up. Now what I'm gonna do is take probably that tube right there and take about two thirds of it and put it up against this side, slide it down as far as it'll go and tape that in place as well. That'll keep the concrete from going into that opening right there. 
The soil at that level down there is completely non-expansive. There's no clay. It's all gravels and boulders and stuff. So I'm not worried about it pushing up. I just want a firm place to connect my columns to. So let me get that splice in there and get this level, get that one level, and then we'll move on to the harder ones. All right, the patch is in place. I'm ready to backfill this. I probably wouldn't do this in more expansive soils because if you have any kind of lip in your tube, the ground can push up on it. But this is not expansive at all. That'll be just fine. All right, let's get these tubes leveled and then get on to the hard stuff. Okay, that one took a lot of fill and the tube kind of leaned in a little bit. It's just a bit off a of plumb. So I'll have to make that up with the bracket. I'll have to set the bracket nice and plumb. And now we're on to these, the ones that are on bedrock, or at least a gigantic boulder. These first four have to be drilled, and it looks like I'm gonna have to open up these holes a bit. See how that looks. No, no, actually that's good. See how this one looks. Oh, that's good as well. The bracket's going to be right here, and that's pretty much on center. So what I'll have to do is kind of figure out where my bolts are going to go. I'm going to drill the rock and put in a couple bolts on each of these, a couple anchors. Those I can do at an angle. This is going to take some uh, interesting form work. I'm going to have to cut the side of the tube a bit to fit this hole just so I can get it backfilled. And this one is basically just going to be a shorter tube and I'll put a bolt into that rock right there. That is the top of a ledge. I dug all down in there and all of that rock down there is connected. It looks like a bunch of gravel but it's not. Oh uh, yeah, yeah that one actually doesn't look that bad. I think they get better as we go down, so yep, this is going to take all day, but I'm going to go cool off and I will be right back to drill some rock. These are redhead anchors. Once you get them pounded into the hole, they have this part on the back. Once you start tightening it, that back part expands and it'll lock it really tight into the hole. Then I'll draw this nut back up to here, put some washers on it, and that'll give me all the protection from uplift that I need. Okay, I have this one and that one left to do. These were pretty damn hard with all the drilling and putting the bolts in, and then the holes were just a mess. The guy from the concrete company was over and took a look to make sure that they could get their truck in here, and he said that should be fine. But he also said that there's supposed to be rain tomorrow. There was no rain in the forecast, which is why we wanted to do it tomorrow. So it's going to be kind of rushed tomorrow. They may come early. They may come at like 10 o'clock. 
And if they do that, I'm going to have to get out here and get a bunch of stuff done real early tomorrow. We had scheduled them for the afternoon, but we're going to play it by ear. We're going to see what the rain does. All right. This takes forever to backfill these big holes like this. This one was like that too. Once I get enough gravel in the bottom, I can add some of these big rocks, but I still have more fill to do on that. That's not as important as getting the rest of these tubes done. Then I have to take my brackets. The first three, I believe, the first three holes yeah, not that one. The first three holes need their rebar cut a little bit, so I got to get that done tonight as well. And I think I'll just lean those right up on the block wall right by them so I don't forget. Always down to the last minute. All right, I got to hurry up and get this done before dark, and then I'll sign off then. I better film the ending before it gets completely dark. The sun is down. And I started this before the sun came up, so it's been about 12 hours, but it is completely done. All 19 tubes. This row right here, you could see it's got two of them that are fairly far off, but the brackets are going to go in them just fine. They'll just be a little bit closer to the edge. I'd rather not have it that way, but... It's solid rock under here, and it is what it is. They'll be just fine. So tomorrow, we're not exactly sure about the time. If it's going to rain, they're going to try to get here early. But if not, sometime after noon, they're going to come and pour the concrete. Before that, Cindy and I are going to go around. We're going to put all the strings back on, fresh strings. And we're going to do all the measurements again and make sure we don't have any poorly situated tubes and make sure the building is the right size and is square. That'll be the last double check. Once you pour the concrete, there's no going back. It's a big day tomorrow and I hope everything goes smoothly. I don't see why not. I spent a lot of time getting this correct. And even though the boring kind of bounced around and stuff I got the tubes to where they're gonna work so I think we're good all right if you want to see the concrete pour make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon if you have any questions or comments make sure you put them in the comment section below and if you share the video and or give it a like it helps the channel out greatly thanks for watching and have a great day